welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. All right, let's talk about tiers, um, watch tiers. All right, so from what I understand, the whole tier idea came from Johnny Casual, who I always want to call Johnny Luxury. Johnny Casual, uh, sort of uh, Archie Luxury is uh, more... Uh, liberal-minded, at least seemingly so, uh, I guess, uh, counterpart. Um, so, I'm probably going to butcher this, and I don't want to misrepresent Johnny Casual's, um, you know, idea of tiers, but essentially, you know, you have the, the, the tiers you start out with, um, you know, like a, like a crappy quartz watch, and then... You know, a, a tear from that might be a, a low-end mechanical watch. Um, I, I think I think Rolexes were tier five, and then it went up to like tier six or seven, and seven would be some two hundred thousand dollar Patek. Well, it was kind of interesting. Um, interesting way of uh, you know looking at uh, watches and horology and trying to um, you know. Uh, trying to sort of fit pieces into this uh, this this system um, you know I, I think it was a, a an attempt at making sort of, sort of an objective system um, but of course I think it depends on one's budget uh, how low or high they're gonna say you know a, a, a tier one is or a tier five is um, you know there's some really uh, well healed people that well that would really uh, uh, look at something like a Submariner as, as pretty low tier a, a steel watch uh, a beater and something uh, like you know a, a gold $25,000 plus piece is, is really something uh, worth worth having um, but what do I think of the tier system well let me just say that Oh, the one thing I didn't really like about the idea of tiers and, and, and the tier system is I thought it made it really easy for a person to believe that they had to start at a bottom tier and then uh, go to tier number two or tier number three and kind of work their way up. And I've never really believed that at all. I've, I've been a sort of a proponent of getting a starter watch like I got with the Orient. Uh, wearing it, enjoying it, and um, giving yourself time to figure out what you want while you save for money, save for something better, and then um, you know, giving yourself that time to really think about what you want to spend your hard-earned cash on, and going for it, going for the grail, straight off, right after that uh, that starter piece, and that's why I think you know, two hundred dollars at the most for the starter piece is what what you wanna you wanna pay. So. For me, the tier system, uh, for me, my tiers is starter, beater, and then uh, your, your grail. That's it. Only two. Nothing between. In fact, I've, I think, I think a, you know, one of these mid-tier mid watches, a $2,000, you know, I, I don't really want to name brands um, because uh, you get into whether it's a, a beater or a shiter. But uh, you know, when you when you work hard for you know a thousand, two thousand dollars, I mean, you're so far towards what I think many people would consider a grail. So uh, why stop? You know, get get your grail. So I'm a, I'm a two tier system guy. Your your starter watch, your beater, one, two at the most, and then your your grail. And that's it. Nothing in between. No, no, no waste. No, you know, what have I wasted? Well, I mean, some people could say I wasted money on the Orient. Um, you know, I don't think so. I mean, it was, uh, it gave me a chance to test out the whole watch thing and whether I liked a watch and whether I could handle uh, having a mechanical watch and the idiosyncrasies of a mechanical watch. Let me tell you, I mean, if you, if you get $170 Orient or Seiko and you like it, man, you're going to love a Rolex. You're going to love an Omega. You know, the quality and the accuracy and the craftsmanship. It's, uh, and the history and all that good stuff. 
Uh, so, so uh, you know, have I have I uh, not taken my advice in, in a way? Yeah, I mean the hundred and fifty dollars I guess I spent on Vostok's that was sort of a guilty pleasure. Did I know it was a waste of money? Yes. Uh, was it worth a hundred and fifty dollars to? Kind of mess around with new watches and just have something new to put on my wrist and to wind and to tinker with. Yeah, sure. I mean, $150 in sort of watch terms is nothing. So, yeah, I'd do it again. I'd do it again. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So I'm a I'm a two tier system guy. Below 200 and around 5,000. Nothing in between. No waste. Um, no no wasted effort. And as far as you know, working your way up to something better, uh, you know, gradually, a thousand dollar piece, a two thousand dollar piece, getting your first good piece, uh, uh, Speedmaster, and then and then going for the no date sub, and then, you know, all that stuff. Just look, decide what you like, decide what you want, and, and, and maybe get a, get a low end, uh, not, a, not a shitter, okay, not a shiter. Uh, a beater and wear it and and uh, and hopefully while you cut your teeth on that you can decide what your true grail is you know I've always thought before you start going far into this hobby you got to figure out what is your ideal collection I mean that's what I did what was my ideal collection it was uh, uh, GMT uh, no date sub um, an Explorer 2 and uh, and uh, date just that was it. I mean, those were all the pieces I wanted. I, I, those were all the pieces I thought. I thought if I got all those pieces, I really wouldn't want anything. I mean, that would be that's. Those are all my grails, you know. And even the extra, you know, GMT function on the the Explorer Two is sort of overkill. But I thought, you know, I could make a decision, and so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll just throw that in my mix. Uh, and so that's sort of my ideal. It was my ideal, and. Um, and you know, I haven't gotten the day just, and will I ever get it? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure, but, but I tell you what. I mean, I, I'm, I kind of say that I'm done buying watches. Well, I tell you, if I ever get that day just, I really am done. I mean, there's nothing else. Uh, could I, could I work up an interest in some other higher end piece? Probably. I'm pretty content though, you know. And I think finding uh, contentness, contentness, and and sort of inner peace with your collection is, uh, is, is what we all look for, and and definitely what I look for. It's easy to. It's easy to um, work yourself up into believing you need more, um, but you don't. And I like the idea of this uh, hobby cul culminating into something, um, some goal-oriented, uh, you know, uh, group of watches that that I can, um, you know, get accomplish. And take my leave, and I'm done. Um, the, the idea of this like, in, endless collecting and flipping and and endless uh, cycle of desire, and I've got no no desire for that at all. I've got no interest in it at all. So, uh, you know, for for new people, get a get a get a nice low end piece. Think about what you want. Kind of formulate an an ideal collection in your head. Start saving for it, and once it's done, get out. I mean, look, you can always, you can always get back into it. But uh, yeah, that's my sort of watch philosophy right now. So um, yeah, hopefully that was interesting for you. Take care. See you next time.